This past weekend was emotionally conflicting for Mariners fans. They snapped a four-game losing streak in a big way on Sunday, but everything that happened prior to that was pure, unadulterated pain. Let's get into it here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Monday, May 2nd, 2022, and this is the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am your host, Teddy Gonzalez, reporter and editor at allseahawks.com. Joined as always by my co host, Colby Patnode. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. Gonzalez is D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z and Colby at C-Pat11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Be sure to also check out our Patreon where we talk about the Mariners even more and also get into some non-baseball talk twice a week. Visit patreon.com forward slash control the zone for more information on that if you are interested and want more of us. New episode dropping for our tier twos and threes later on today, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if this is your first time joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast, welcome to the show. If you like what you hear, give us a follow Follow or subscribe wherever you listen to this. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. So Julio Rodriguez got his first major league bomb. And I do mean bomb yesterday as the Mariners ended a four game losing streak. Logan Gilbert started that game and was named American League Pitcher of the Month earlier today. We're going to talk about all that and uh, we're also going to get you set for tonight's game against the Astros later on in the show. But first, Colby, a lot happened down in Miami this weekend and aside from yesterday's win, none of it was all too good. For the Mariners. Let's start with Mitch Haniger, who had to exit in his first game back from the COVID list. He's now on the 10 day IL with a grade two ankle sprain. How long would you venture to say he'll be out? And how do you think the uh, Mariners should respond to losing him? Well, uh, thankfully, I've gone to medical school, so I, I'm qualified to answer that question. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a high ankle sprain. It's a grade two. Grade three is the worst. Grade one is the, the best. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an issue here. Um, I would say it's, I, I don't think you're going to see him at all this month. Uh, I think that's highly unlikely. I think the earliest you might see him is mid June, but there's a possibility this thing could be all the way to the all-star break. Um, you know, Mitch is, uh, has a, has a history uh, of, of injury, um, and things tend to linger, uh, with Mitch. So, <clears throat> Who knows? But it's we're talking about a grade two here. It's a pretty you know moderately severe, I believe, is the the term that they use for it. Um, and it's it's six to six to eight weeks at least, and sometimes it takes up to twelve. Uh, these these are serious issues. Now, could they maybe get him back a little sooner if he just DHs? Maybe, but are you really going to run that risk? I I don't think so. So I would bet you don't see him until June ten at the earliest. But at this point, I think I have to just accept that it's probably going to be till the All-Star break. And anything I get before that is going to be a bonus because he is going to have to go out on a rehab assignment as well. So he's not just going to sit around for six weeks and then, you know, just pop back into the cleanup spot in the Mariners lineup. He's going to have to go to rehabs. So I like I said, for me, anything before the All-Star break is bonus, but that's what I'm anticipating the timeline to be. Mm -hmm. And then... How do you think the Mariners should respond? How will they fill this hole, if possible, um, on this roster? I mean, statistically speaking, the offense has been better without Mitch Haniger. Now, I'm not saying they're connected, but um, it, it, it has been fine without him. They've, they've managed. Uh, but that's really more about just luck, happenstance. Um, obviously, losing Mitch Haniger is bad hurts you. Um, and the unfortunate thing right now is that they really don't have any other options in the minors because who is there? Taylor Trammell is hurt. Uh, Kyle Lewis, we got good news on that front. It sounds like he's going to start a rehab assignment very soon. So he's probably the answer in a few weeks, but that's still a few weeks away. Uh, Jared Kelnick is really struggling right now. Julio is starting to come into his own. 
Jesse Winker had a, had a pretty nice series as well. Uh, and, you know, it's just a matter of time before those hits start to fall uh, there. So, yeah, they're just going to have to piece this together with Kalnick, Dylan Moore, and maybe some Stuart Fairchild and uh, see what happens. But and once Kyle Lewis is back, that's the answer. But Lewis is also kind of the answer for Jared Kalnick. So what would really help the Mariners right now is if Jared Kalnick could turn into September of 2021 Kalnick. That would solve a lot of issues, but we're a month in and we don't have any evidence that that Kalnick is around right now. So they're just kind of stuck I, I, unless they're going to go out and make a May trade, which is possible. But there are a lot of teams right now that are not going to be willing to trade guys off their major league roster because they're technically still in it. And so we'll see. It's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty tough needle to thread for uh, Jerry DePoto. Yeah, speaking of trades, um, there is one possibility, maybe, out there. Anthony Santander of the uh, Baltimore Orioles, who's off to a really hot start right now. Ken Rosenthal tweeted three or four days ago that um, he's probably going to get traded sooner rather than later. And the Orioles are one of those teams, I mean, they're in arguably the toughest division in all of baseball, um, and they're very clearly not going to compete in 2022. They might be one of those teams that is willing to deal away from their major league roster now or in a matter of weeks. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Maybe Will Myers still, uh, he's obviously hurt right now, but um, obviously carrying quite a bit of money and um, you know, the Padres have right. looked to try and offload his contract and he's a solid player. He's uh, someone that could give you Mitch Hanniger ish production at the plate and pretty much same defense, which is to say not that much. Um, Right. So those are those are a couple of options to mull over potentially, and obviously, you know the um, the Mariners and Jerry Depoto are going to come come through everything, uh, including the minor leagues guys that are just have been career minor leaguers and minor league performers and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, maybe Fair they child. find yeah Fairchild uh, is one of those guys. Into that mix, yeah, yeah, and there's also you know who knows there might be uh, this year's version of Ben Gamble out there. Maybe it is Fairchild. Maybe, or maybe it is somewhere. Yeah, maybe it's Ben Gamble. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's Ben Gamble. Maybe yeah, it's true. actually Ben Gamble. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Tyler Naquin, like there, there's some guys who maybe it's Brett Gardner. I mean, I, I don't know if he wants to play in Seattle, true. but he's out there. Um, but even that, that it's going to take him about a month to get ready. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just not a lot of options out there. Uh, the one nice thing about uh, Santander is that he's at least pretty good in right field. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Jared Kelnick leads – all of Major League Baseball in defensive runs saved in right field. Uh, but mm -hmm. not too far behind him is uh, actually Santander. So that's a good thing. Um, it, it's helpful out there, certainly. But uh, I'm sure there's going to be a decent market for Santander. I would imagine that the uh, the Padres are quite interested since their outfield is, let's be nice and say, bad. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see what they decide to do. And we did hear last summer that Maybe the Mariners checked in on Trey Mancini uh, along mm. with John Means. So maybe they have some idea of uh, what the Orioles are looking for uh, or who in their system they like. So we'll see if something comes of it. That would be a very nice ad because that's just a quality, you know, league average bat who has some upside and, and fits the lineup pretty well. So uh, we'll see. Jerry's not afraid to make trades in, in May. Um, obviously the big one, the, uh, the Denard span, Alex Colomay trade. Uh, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if he, if he tries to find a deal like that. Um, mm -hmm. because yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a while without Mitch and, and that is obviously going to hurt. Yeah, absolutely. So Julio Rodriguez, as I said, at the uh, top of the show, got his first major league home run and hopefully he's starting to go on a path here where he might be able to make up for some of that lost production uh, that mm -hmm. the, uh, the Mariners have lost with, uh, which meant with Mitch Haniger going on the uh, 10 day IL and uh, the Mariners won yesterday, seven to three Logan Gilbert looks solid. And it was also Julio's not, not just his first home run. It was also his first three hit game of his career. Is he turning the corner by chance? 
We're going to be talking about that and more in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. You're listening to Locked On Mariners. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. There are recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, including myself, taking fans through the season like no other network. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like us. So, Colby, let's talk about Julio Rodriguez, who had his first three-hit game of his career, including a 450-foot bomb off of Sandy Alcantara. I think he's finally turning the corner here because he's looked better over the last week. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's certainly been a, a positive trend uh, since April 17th. He's hitting 306, 370, 429, um, which is obviously going to play. Uh, he's also been one of the best defensive center fielders in the American League so far, which is uh, a pleasant surprise, let's say. Uh, mm-hmm. it, he certainly looks healthier. He's still... Uh, stealing bases like a madman uh he is hitting the ball with authority he's drawing his walk still uh, hasn't really changed much of anything that he was doing in the first you know to 10 games of the year he's just finding more results um play discipline is exactly where you want it uh, and he's just continuing to uh to rake a little bit here so hopefully it continues uh you're you're like you said you're gonna need him uh, you're trying to replace mitch Haniger. but uh so far so good uh in the last week or so from julio and he's going to continue to get better uh, because that's what Julio does. He, he's consistently getting better. He's learning um, how pitchers are attacking him. He's learning what he needs to do, and he's putting the ball in play with authority. He's recognizing pitches. He's recognizing spin. He's getting on base, and he's finding a way to help the team every single day. So it appears that Julio is – it probably it's too small of a sample to say he's in the midst of a breakout, but he's certainly trending in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And Julio is the kind of talent that if he is, you know, in a little bit of a breakout uh, streak right now, he can carry the offense for a couple weeks because he can he can do everything. So, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's again, talk to me again next week. And if he's still playing this well, then we can probably call it a breakout. Um, and then at that point, we probably have to talk about moving him up in the order a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for now, you know, put him where he's where he's been, where he's comfortable and, and uh, let him keep uh, keep hitting. Yeah, he's elevating the ball a little bit better now. And, of course, he's been ripping the ball like crazy every time that he makes contact. He hit another single for 109 miles per hour off the bat yesterday. Just ridiculous power this guy has. And if he's going to get the ball a little bit more elevated, more consistently, there's going to be more home runs. We're going to see more doubles. We're probably going to even see triples with his speed. Um, And, you know, and the great thing about him, too, has been, um, you know, well, this is probably not sustainable, but... Every time he hits a single, he's turning that into a double by stealing bases. Like, he's incredibly aggressive on the base pass. He leads Major League Baseball in steals. He's 9 of 9 right now. Did get picked off the other day, but, you know, uh, that's nitpicking at this point. (laughs) Does that not count as a caught stealing, by the way? I don't think it does, because it wasn't an actual attempt, right? I know, but you got got caught, like, on the base. That should be a caught stealing, whatever. 9 for 9, officially, so... Mm. Um, yeah, he's been he's been great, and it, it's funny, you know, you see the the single to right field, 109 miles an hour, just a good piece of hitting. You see the 450 foot bomb to left center field, um, that was only possible because Don Mattingly intentionally walked Abraham Toro to get yeah. to Julio Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. But then you see his first hit, routine ground ball to third base, 30.3 feet per second down to first or whatever it was, and you just see yesterday was just the entire encapsulation of Julio's entire offensive profile you can go the other way, hit the ball hard the other way. You can hit the ball out of the ballpark and he is fast. And there is no such thing as a routine ground ball when Julio puts it in play. So yesterday was just kind of the full spectrum of what he can do offensively. Yeah. And I mean, what a sick way to get your first major league home run off of Sandy Alcantara. Are you serious? You know, you got power against power there and he takes him 450 feet. That's nasty. 
That is nasty. Yeah. That, that's a that feels like a very good way for Julio to get his first bomb. And it's um I wouldn't say that it's necessarily worth the wait of uh, nearly a month worth of games uh, of him not getting a home run, but uh, that did uh, that did make things feel a little bit better for him to get it in that way. And he got the ball yesterday. It was really cool. The uh, the Mariners mm-hmm. released a video of him uh, signing a bat and a ball for the kids that got the uh, the home run ball, and they made a trade. It was it was really cool. Julio just gets it, man. He mm-hmm. he really just he just gets it. He he's understands the assignment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He's twenty one years old and he's a budding superstar. Like yeah, Major League Baseball should do everything in its power to pump this guy up. Um, mm-hmm. which we know they won't because they're really bad at <laughs> nobody likes Mike Trout and it's major league baseball's fault. The Met like best player of all time. People are like, eh, he's boring. Whatever. Incredible. So, yeah. And he's and he's off to a great start again this year. Because of course he is. He's, he's Mike the MVP. Trout. <laughs> yeah, he's the like MVP he's... of the league. Like literally <laughs> the greatest player of all time. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not sure it's a bit. I mean Barry Bonds probably still right now, but you know what I mean? Just like Game for game, he's the greatest offensive player of all time. And people are like, eh. you forget about <laughs> him sometimes. I know. Like if you're if you're if you're a Phillies fan, how much do you think about Mike Trout? Never. Why would you? We only talk about Mike Trout because he's in our division. Ooh. So Yeah. Ugh. I just uh, man. You know what's Julio, crazy too? Yeah. JP Crawford is like yeah, point one is like point one F four off of Mike he's Trout tied. right now. Oh, he's tied he's, right now. Oh, wow. in B War, in B War. Oh, yes, he's B War. Point like one or point two off of him in F War. Yeah, and that's not even like good JP Crawford defensively either. JP's made some rough errors this year. Yeah, um, I think he's at five. Yeah, he's um, at five. Ironically, now. he hits a home run in a game. He's going to make a throwing error. It's, it's just really weird. It's been the pattern, but uh, JP Crawford, the P stands for power, not precision. <laughs> clearly at least this year um so at least through the first at least through the first yeah. month of the season but he's been uh great at the plate um Ooh. let's talk about logan gilbert though he um you know we we pumped up this pitching matchup between him and alcantara on friday's episode quite frankly it's kind of a letdown <laughs> alcantara wasn't yeah. great he gave up five uh gilbert walked four he went five and two thirds and only gave up the one run a home run to brian anderson only the second run he's given up all month which helped him win american league pitcher of the month uh this uh this morning uh that was officially announced uh but yeah gilbert not fantastic in this one and the walks are starting to become a little bit of a problem for him seven walks in the last 11 and a third innings of work mm-hmm. um what did you see out of gilbert yesterday yeah, it was it was strange. Yesterday was maybe the first start where Gilbert had better off speed stuff than than fastball, hmm. um, and that might be the first time we've ever said that in his major league career. Uh, the fastball was still good; it was solid, um, but there were a lot of ninety fours, ninety fives after the first inning. Uh, and we're used to seeing ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. I'm not concerned about it. It just goes to you know to speak to how he just didn't really have. The, the fastball yesterday it just wasn't there for him uh he almost hit three guys uh he walked four guys pretty much all of them because he couldn't locate his fastball the fastball kept riding inside on righties pretty aggressively um he just did not have good feel for it uh fortunately what he did have pretty good feel for was the slider and the changeup. i even dropped a few curveballs in there um it was just it was interesting that Gil- we watched Gilbert and like his average fastball velo yesterday, technically up from where it was, uh, you know, at his other starts, but he just did not have that fastball. Uh, he was able to get ahead in counts with the slider and the change up in the curveball. And then the fastball kind of set up those pitches, but it wasn't a dominant performance from, from Gilbert. He, he only generated seven whiffs on 45 swings. Um, this is one of those instances where, Gilbert wasn't as good as the box score indicated, mm-hmm. but he was still plenty good. And it, it kind of shows why Gilbert is, you know, a potential budding ace because he didn't have his best stuff mm-hmm. and he still got through a pretty decent lineup, giving up just one run and three hits in five and two thirds. It was, it was kind, of, kind of Matt Brashian type of start mm-hmm. for, for Gilbert. Um, only, you know, Gilbert's more equipped to, to work around control issues right now than brash so yeah it wasn't wasn't the the pitcher's duel we were quite expecting um scoreboard wise it it looked like it for a little while but 
yeah, neither of these guys were particularly sharp. Uh, they had their moments, but neither of them were, you know, as we had probably advertised. Um, just mm-hmm. it's it's unusual that both guys would have an off day on the same day. Yeah, the thing with Gilbert too, right? Is like if I don't know some of his starts, like he's been good. Don't get me wrong, but he doesn't mm-hmm. like he hasn't been particularly dominant at any given point or time. Cool. Like. It's weird, and I and I know like you you haven't you know I haven't watched uh, a lot of American League pitchers this year. You haven't either, but uh, I mean it doesn't really feel like he was AL pitcher of the month caliber. Yet he only gave up two runs, and you know he's obviously leading the AL and ERA and all that stuff. And that stuff does get taken into account for awards like these. But like feels it kind awesome, of feels yeah. like there's going to be some regression here at some point, right? Yeah, you, you look at his. Uh, his stat cast page 30th percentile on average exit velo, 19th percentile on hard hit percentage, 23rd percentile on whiff rate, mm-hmm. you know, 45th percentile on uh, X batting average. Like, those are not good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and he, even the numbers where he's okay at, he's literally just okay. 62nd percentile in strikeout percentage, 58th percentile in walk percentage. 57th percentile in X Woba, 57th percentile in XERA. Uh, the only thing that he is plus in right now is barrel percentage at 80th percentile. So there are some numbers here that are indicating that a crash of, of some kind is coming soon. Um, but I mean, again, you look at his numbers right now, he's at 24.8% K percentage, major league average is 22. He's at 7.3% walk percentage, major league average is 8.4. His XERA is still 339. So it's not that he is, um, you know, it's not that he's getting ready to just implode and be terrible. It's Mm -hmm. just that he's probably at some point going to revert back to what we thought he was going to be for most of the year, which was, you know, maybe a number three, number four who, who flashes. So we'll see how long he can keep this up. Uh, The good news is is that he has kind of weathered this without his best fastball uh, command. Mm -hmm. And if he can find that, then, if that's something he has for most of the rest of the year with this hot start, he is going to put himself in, in the conversation for Cy Young votes. Well, the M's are down in Houston for a three game set starting tonight. We'll get you set for tonight's matchup between Marco Gonzalez and Jake to Rizzi in just a moment. But first a reminder, this episode of lockdown Mariners is brought to you by built bar. Summer is coming. And with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations. Just throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you are fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars, they're healthy and delicious. So no more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's easy. All you have to do is go to built.com and order now. All built bars and puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with built bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Most built bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Now, compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Go to built.com to get all your favorites banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, and so many more. They are all delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time so check them out at built.com use promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off your order that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 for 15 percent off your order at built.com so colby we got marco gonzalez on the bump for the mariners tonight which is fairly surprising considering he took 109 Mm -hmm. off the bat off of his left wrist and was playing catch the next day though so he's good to go seemingly at least and uh we'll see how he uh fares tonight what are you hoping to see out of marco in uh in houston uh health first and yeah. foremost um yeah it's a bit surprising that he that he's here and he's going to make this start um obviously you know one of the factors here is we we got to see um you know how's the command how's the control uh that's critically important with marco but yeah this is one of those weird times where we're going to be looking at velocity as well. I mean, Marco's never going to light up the radar gun, but if he's, you know, 83, 84 instead of 87, 88, that's, that's an issue. So, uh, yeah, it just, you're looking for Marco to go out there and, and not repeat what he did the last time he faced the Astros, but just go out there, throw strikes, show that you can be competitive, um, make sure the velocity and the control and the command is, is in the ballpark of what we can, ex- what we usually can expect from Marco. 
mm-hmm. and just make sure that he's actually healthy. Um, because if he's not, you're going to put a lot of strain on your bullpen. Um, and you do have a, uh, a long time, a long time between you now and your next day off and Matt Brash going on Wednesday. So it's a bit of a risk here going with Marco, uh, to, to be perfectly honest, but, uh, Hey, he says he's healthy. He's throwing the ball fine, and and you kind of have to trust the Mariners when it comes to this type of thing. So, um, hopefully, he's you know, be great if he can repeat what he did to Houston and Seattle. But uh, mm-hmm. I'll take five, six innings of two, three, four run ball. Just just keep the team in it and get out of the start relatively healthy. Yeah. Um. So Julio Rodriguez got moved up a spot in the lineup. He's sitting six tonight. Um, but before we actually get further into this game, we have some breaking news. So a little bit of a curveball here on Locked On Mariners. Per Jerry DePoto, the tentative plan is for Kyle Lewis to join AAA Tacoma in Salt Lake City this week. Uh, the uh, the uh, Rainiers are playing uh, Salt Lake uh, starting on Tuesday, tomorrow. And uh, they're going to be there all the way through Sunday. So mm-hmm. it appears that we are going to be seeing Kyle Lewis starting his rehab stint uh, over the next five, six days. So that's really, really good news. And uh, for the conversation that we had at the top of the show, that is massive for the Mariners, considering uh, Hanniger might be out for uh, quite some time. All right, so uh, getting back into this game, Mariners going up against Jaco to Rizzi. They've had some success against him. He has been awful this year. Um, like I said, Julio is now up to six in the lineup. Uh, Eugenio Suarez is DHing. We got Terenz behind the dish and hitting ninth. Uh, Abraham Toro is playing third base. Um, what are you hoping to see out of the offense against Oda Rizzi? How, how, how do you think they might be able to take advantage of uh, Oda Rizzi's struggles thus far? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, you got to jump on him. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't let him settle in. They did a pretty good job of that last time out. Um, it's not overpowering stuff. You know, it, it's a very common profile. Uh, it's it's a profile that the Mariners should be able to take advantage of. Uh, they stack a bunch of lefties in there um, and tee off on them. So they have to they have to be aggressive. They have to go. They have to go after them in the, the middle of, of the Astros bullpen. The back end's okay, but if you can get into the the middle of it, that's where there's a lot of vulnerability. We saw it last series. I um, mean, if you can knock Odorizzi out of this game early you can kind of set up the rest of the series to your advantage because they're going to have to cycle through some of these arms. And we know that the, the Astros bullpen, not very good. So yeah, you got to be aggressive um, on the fastball. It, it's, it's very average stuff. Um, and he is not throwing the ball well right now. So you have to jump in this uh, opportunity and you need to score runs tonight, uh, particularly because the next two games, the pitching matchups are not really in your favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me get your pick to click tonight. Who are you cursing? <laughs> Didn't I say JP was going to hit a home run this weekend? I feel like I did. You said okay. he was going to hit two, and then you proceeded to uh, name like five, six other members yeah, of the Mariners lineup, and then they yeah. struggled quite a bit offensively. Did yeah. all of them struggle? Oh, man. I mean, well, uh, I don't know of all of them. I don't remember who exactly you picked and who you uh, did okay. not, but uh, I mean, let's just let's just get it out there, right? You hate Dylan Moore. Dylan Moore was the only one to produce sure any source of offense for the Mariners on Saturday. So uh, I'm I'm not saying that the Mariners, you know, uh, success hangs in the balance of your picks, but I'm also Ooh. not not saying that as well here. So who are you going with down in Houston tonight? <laughs> uh, Julio's going to park one on the train tracks uh, out in uh, mm. left field. Um, how about how about this? How about this? J.P. Crawford hits a home run into the Crawford boxes opposite field because wow. that is a joke of a left field, and Major League Baseball should be embarrassed that they let that thing happen. It's the only reason Bregman hits home runs at, at that stadium. Um, no, but I'll, I'll go. I will take. Uh, I'll take Julio. Stick with Julio. He's he's putting one on the train tracks. Um, and he's going to steal a base off of Maldonado, which is very difficult to do. Ooh, Combo meal yeah. for Julio Rodriguez. That is difficult. Um, yeah, I, I like that call, though, because he's starting to heat up. Favorable. Now we, now we, 
I, I'm I'm not overlapping. I'm not overlapping. I'm just saying I like it. I I, I like it because like the you got the Crawford boxes. It feels likely that he's going to rip into one. If he can elevate it enough, he's going to he's going to get one. You hit a routine like. fly ball down the left field line. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get a home run. Yeah, yeah, and and we know that he's going to hit it uh, long and far enough. It's just uh, will it have that that angle? Um, it should. Uh, I, I would suspect that he's going to at least hit one over the next three days. Um, I'm going to go Ty France though. It was a little bit of a. It's been a little bit of a struggle for him ever he since the home stand. Yeah. So just call it uh, is he was bad. Yeah, I think he gets back on track. Um, quite Ooh. literally in the sense that he's oh, going to put oh, one on the train tracks uh, in this is, game. Is. And uh, yeah, I think he's... Uh, we're going to see more uh, homestand Ty France than uh, road trip Ty France in this one. I'd say. Alright, so that is going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Locked On Mariners for Colby Patnode. I'm Tidying Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every day. We greatly appreciate your support. Now, make your second listen of the day the Locked On MLB podcast. That's where Paul Francis Sullivan, and please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the Major League's present and past. It's free wherever you get your podcasts, just like us. So have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Go Ems. Peace.